Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Riss the Redeemed deck, a 1 mana 1 1 legendary elf warrior that for 3 mana can tap to make a 1 1 green and white elf warrior creature token, but the ability we're most interested in is the second one. For 6 mana, we can tap Riss and then essentially double all the tokens we control, which is a very powerful effect if we can get to it. 6 mana, of course, is pretty pricey. We have two cards that can help us to get to 6 mana. One of them is Song of Rayleigh, which on the first and second chapters of the saga turns all our creatures into mana creatures as they can tap to make one mana of any color. And then on the third chapter we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control and those creatures also gain vigilance, trample and indestructible until end of turn. So we get to free roll and attack. And then if we happen to have another Song of Rayleigh, we can even make use of that vigilance by tapping our creatures in the second main phase after they've already attacked. So the Song of Rayleigh is still quite good in multiples and synergizes very well with Risa Redeemed. And then the other card that can generate a lot of mana is Growing Rights of Itlamok, a 3 mana legendary enchantment that when it enters the battlefield lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of our library, we can reveal a creature card from among them and put it into our hand. And then at the beginning of our end step, if we control 4 or more creatures, we get to transform the Growing Rights into Cradle of the Sun, which taps to add mana equal to the amount of creatures we control, which is of course very powerful in a tokens deck and can potentially help us uh, generate the 6 mana we need to use Riss's second ability, as well as of course when we play the Growing Rites it can help us find Riss if we don't have one already, so another great synergistic card in the deck, and I made sure to include enough creatures so that the Growing Rites itself will still find the creature a decent amount of the time, even though we have a lot of cards that are dedicated to making tokens, some of which are just sorceries which we won't be able to find with it. So these are the two main ways we have of generating extra mana in this deck, but then we also have some of the usual suspects in a tokens deck, like the venerated Loxodon, which has the convoke mechanic, which also plays quite well with all those cheap token makers, putting a plus one plus one counter on each creature that helped us convoke it. And then we also have Trostani as a nice curve topper, giving other creatures plus one plus one, and making two one one white soldier creature tokens with a lifelink when it enters the battlefield. So it gives us another nice token we can double up with the Rizda Redeemed. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we also have the full playset of Lenor Elves, as we can always use the extra mana to activate Riz. The full four copies of Rizda Redeemed, as well as the full four copies of Emara, Soul of the Accord, as another legendary creature, which when it becomes tapped it generates a one one white soldier creature token with lifelink, so also plays quite well with the Song of Rayleigh, because we can uh, tap Amara for mana and still generate a 1-1 token, and also plays quite well with the Convoke from Venerated Loxodon. And at some point I did used to play Mox Amber in this deck, since we have for Riss and for Amara as cheap legendaries, but 8 total legendary creatures was a little bit inconsistent for uh, turning on the Mox Amber for mana, but maybe if we get another cheap legendary that uh, works well in this deck we could consider it. And then we have some 2 mana token makers, Raise the Alarm, making 2 1 1 white soldier creature tokens at instant speed, and Sapperling Migration, making 2 1 1 green Sapperling creature tokens at sorcery speed, but we can also kick it for a total of 6 mana, making 4 of those tokens instead, so also plays quite well with the extra mana from Song of Freilies and the Growing Rites of Ilthamok. Then we've got our 4 Song of Freilies, or 4 Growing Rites, and also 4 copies of a Lovestruck Beast, giving us another 1 mana play, making a 1 1 white human creature token. And then for just 3 mana we get a 5 5, which is a great blocker against aggressive decks, can only attack if we control a 1 1 creature, which is not too big of an issue in this deck. And then we've got our Venerate Loxodon and two copies of Trostani Discordant. And then the mana base is pretty straightforward. We've got six basic planes, eight basic forests, four Sun Petal Grove and four Temple Garden. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with uh, fine looking hands. Probably gonna start out with Emara. And then the sampling migrations will help us convoke out a Loxodon as well. Opponent on a self mill. Ooh, Arc Light Phoenix deck, and they hit double Phoenix on uh, the first attempt, so that's pretty scary. And next turn, I could play both migrations and still convoke the Loxodon potentially. And Dreadhorde Arcanists. Alright. So... 
It's migration time. And now our best top deck is probably something like Trostani, giving the team plus one plus one. Song of Freilis would be a little bit slow to get going. I wouldn't say no to Cradle or just Arisa Redeemed. Alright, we're just gonna start smashing. I'll keep the Lenora Elves back, I think. Put on down to seven. They might be able to get back double Phoenix this turn. But we'll see whether that's enough. Blast zone for one. Does not deal with our tokens. And our opponent explodes. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and got a Riz, we've got the Song and the Growing Rights and the Token Maker, so yeah, I guess we're like one other Token Maker short of really going off. And then hopefully I get to go Riz into Migration, and then maybe play Song, hope to have picked up something else we can play with the mana from Song of Freilis. And then the Growing Rights should be able to transform the turn we play it. I guess the fail case is I just activate Rissa Redeemed to make an extra token, which also works. Facing blue whites and search for Ascanta, well, opponent's probably going to be packing some sweepers, which uh, I can't really beat very difficult to play around them with a deck like this, so just gonna hope they don't have it. And then I could play the Growing Rights now, but it's not gonna transform me yet, so I think I'd rather just make a token with Riss. Sure. you out of time I've got it. so just playing Trostani is an option here although it would be a good follow-up to a sweeper problem is I'm not gonna have five mana if my board gets swept so yeah let's just play Trostani And hopefully we can dodge a Shatter the Sky. And then next turn I could play Growing Rights and uh, activate Rizzo Redeemed as well. Hmm. Now I do have to watch out for Zelda Wreckage as well, which they could easily have here. So don't necessarily want to send everyone. I want to leave myself with four creatures so the Growing Rights still transforms. Ideally, I would have enough mana to uh, activate Riss end of turn as well. So I guess I can play the Growing Rights first, see if it gets countered, and if it does, then I get to attack with everyone. Does resolve. I think I'm taking Amara over Loxodon. If there is a sweeper, it helps me get back on the board. And then how much do we attack with? I think I just send one creature, actually, to guarantee being able to flip Growing Rights and activate Riss. So let's send, I don't know, I guess a token. In case I have, like, a Deputy of Detention, I would rather have differently uh, worded tokens. And 
and then could play out a Loxodon. But I think I'm gonna keep it, because if they can't beat uh, the board, they're gonna die anyway. And at least I got a flipped Cradle out of the deal. Even if they do wipe the board. Although I guess Field of Ruin could maybe uh, interfere with that. Alright, don't really have to commit more to the board. Can start sending in more tokens now. Let's see, ideally I would attack for lethal. So this is 14 exactly. 6, 12, 14. So I think I'm just gonna send this and then make them use a saddle. I can still double the tokens with Riss before the saddle happens. And get all our lands, basically. Alright, don't think I need to play out anything else. And now even if they use the Field of Ruin on the Cradle, I'll still have a lot of mana. And our opponent explodes, they're out of sweepers, and Riss is just gonna take over. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, mediocre but uh, I guess keepable hands. Really missing one of the payoff cards like Song of Freilies, Growing Rights, maybe Riss Redeemed, although we wouldn't have the mana to activate Riss all that much. I guess a Loxodon would also be very good. So we've got multiple good draws. This turn. Against the green deck, they could play a big 3-drop next turn, so Amara might not be able to attack. But it's probably still my best play here. Blue-green and a Marwyn. Alright, so maybe a blue-green elf deck. That's gonna go big with Marwyn. The Beast is mainly just a good blocker in this deck, more than an attacker that buys us time to eventually set up a Riss or Song of Freilies to take over the game. But yeah, opponent's going off here with a Beast Whisper now too. So I'm gonna need to find a Riss to redeem pretty soon. For now, I guess a Beast can attack. Their opponents got their mana engine with Marwyn and their draw engine with Beast Whisper, and they have their own growing rights too to generate even more mana. Their big finish is probably going to be like an Andre's Forerunner to give everything plus two plus two and trample. But if everything plays out fair and square and we do get our risks, we should be able to go even bigger than what they're doing right now. But at the moment, I would say we're pretty far behind. Alright, so let's see if we find a Riss. There we go. So we still have a chance here. Depends how quickly they can find their finisher, like their Andres Forerunners or what have you. And next turn I'll start doubling. And Nissa who shakes the world. I mean, they have all the mana they want, so if they have a finale here, I'm super dead. Nissa plus untapping Cradle is a nice combo too, in case you didn't have enough mana already. And sadly, they had the Andre's Forerunners in hand already. So 
So doing some quick math here, I can pretty safely conclude that we're dead. Alright, GG's. So yeah, both decks got to do their thing. They were just a little bit faster. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and this hand seems pretty good. Still gonna lead with Elves. But the next turn I can go Amara plus Riss. And hopefully we get to transform the rights on curve. Do we see a Thought Erasure maybe? Nope, another tapped Temple of Malady. So we're point on some sort of Sultai, maybe Field of the Dead deck. Uh oh, I don't like the spawns, this is a Disfigure. Gonna take out Amara, alright, at least we have a backup. And a Raise the Alarm. Now I wouldn't be able to flip the Growing Rites this turn. But so be it. So I guess Amara plus Raise the Alarms to play then. And then next turn, hopefully I get to flip rights. So yeah, this definitely looks like the Sultai Feel of the Dead elemental deck with Risen Reef and Yarok. Hopefully not too many sweepers. Hmm. Well, don't recall them playing Search for Ascanta, so maybe it is kind of a Sultai control deck. In which case, you know, they could have some sweepers, but they did disfigure my creatures, so... Maybe there's no Ritual of Soot. Incoming. So I can play the rights. That misses, but that's okay. And then I can end of turn make three more tokens. Alright, no sweeper, please. Opponent passes. Suppose I should have done this end of turn instead of uh, waiting until now. Yeah, and double cast down takes out my tokens, so I don't get to make quite as many as uh, I would have been able to make if I just activated Riss if I put a stop on my own end step. But we're still in good shape here, so can't really complain. So I guess I'll just use this now. Don't have anywhere else to spend my mana on. Don't think there's a card that punishes me for having more creatures in play. Massacre Girl would wipe the board anyway. And yeah, that's one of the downsides of cast down, not hitting legendary creatures. Although we will get uh, a new two mana removal spell in Ikoria, which will maybe replace cast down in some of these historic decks. See if I can find maybe a Trostani, keep up white mana, although I can always tap my tokens for white mana. And no Trostani. I guess I'll take a Lovestruck Beast in case there is a sweeper to get back on the board. Let's see, how much damage is this? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I guess I'll keep doubling my tokens then. And we'll hold the beasts. Now I don't think it matters whether we end of turn activate risk or wait. Escape Uro. Breeding pool untapped. Oh no, what is this? Maelstrom Pulse. Interesting, but our opponent explodes. I guess it must not have been enough. Although I do think Maelstrom Pulse would clear both the normal soldiers and the lifelinking soldiers, since they share the same name. But I guess I could have just made another token with Riss end of turn and probably killed them. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, 
pretty solid looking hand. Just gonna beat down with venerated loxodons. And Demara especially quite good with the Loxodon as well. Up against a black-white life gain deck. Yeah, Soul Warden is pretty effective against a bunch of tokens. Still gonna play Emara. And then Riss is a way we can potentially still go over the top. So even though Soul Warden is annoying, I still wanna keep my Riss in place. I'm not gonna offer the trade in case they do accept. So they've got a dream start of Soul Warden into Pride Mates. So I'm not gonna get to attack with Emara. But uh, let's see. If I go Migration, I can still Convoke a Loxodon if I want to. Although the priority is probably just getting the Song of Freilis in play, so I can start doubling with Riss. So I can play Migration. And then play my land taps. And then next turn I can already start doubling. Double Warden? Uh oh. As long as a Pride Mate doesn't like trample or gain flying. It's okay, I guess. Another song. It's definitely gonna be nice. So I can tap Amara for mana. Then I'll have an extra token to double with Riss. And do I play Song of Freilis this turn or do I wait until next turn? I think I wait until next turn. So, I guess we can play Loxodon this turn. And maybe playing into like a Jani wiping my board, but they're stuck on two lands, so I don't think I care too much. So let's go doubling. And then I can jump with this token or the Loxodon if the token dies. Next turn attack for lots thanks to Indestructible and Trample. Saracenant, that is a problem, but we can maybe get their life total low enough where it doesn't fly anymore. I mean, do I care? more about the token or the Loxodon at this point, it's kind of hard to say. I guess for next turn I would prefer the extra power and toughness, although I guess it would just block with the Ascendants, but then it would die if they go below a certain threshold. So I think it's still good to do this for now, just to get them low next turn with the Song of Freilis attack. So step one is just smash. And then we'll reevaluate. Alright, opponent decides to take it. If they would block with the Sarah Sendant, it would end up dying once they drop below a certain life total. And then I still get to play the song so I can activate Riss end of turn. Do I bother playing the Loxodon? I guess I might as well. And then. Should still leave enough mana to activate Riss. Could have used Riss first and then convoked a Loxodon, tapping as many tokens as possible, but I might not want to give them the extra life here if I can avoid it. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up. End of turn, gonna get to activate Riss again if we wanted to. And yeah, double Song of Freilis proving to be quite powerful here, helping us generate even more mana once we get that big attack in, thanks to Vigilance. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a pretty beautiful looking hand. Don't have a way of generating extra mana to activate Riss, but this could just be a beatdown draw with Loxodon and the uh, Lovestroke Beast. And we've got a pretty good curve. So let's play our Riss. Facing a tapped Steam Vents. Ooh, treasure hunts. Don't know what the red is for, but uh, I guess we'll find out pretty soon. So against treasure hunt, typically we just want to try and apply as much pressure as possible to kill them before they combo off. I guess just play the token from beasts, convoke Loxodon, seems fine. Another treasure hunt. Ooh, finds Glinthorn Buccaneer, so that's what their win condition is. They want to play Buccaneer and then just discard a bunch of lands to hand size and kill us. Alright, pretty original take on the treasure hunt deck, but yeah, it's gonna be a little bit too slow here against this powerful start with Loxodon. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. We're missing a payoff card, but I don't think I can mulligan a hand with double elves and Still a reasonable hand otherwise. Alright, there's my payoff potentially. So priority is getting four creatures in play and then playing growing rights. What are we up against? Red white, Hero of Precinct 1, alright. Don't mind creature decks in general. So this turn, playing another elf, and then probably just to raise the alarm end of turn. Could potentially ambush the hero precinct one, but I don't think it's worth it. Opponent doesn't even attack. So Mardu tokens is what we're up against. Time to play Growing Rights. And hopefully find a Riss. I guess I'll settle for Loxodon. Which I sadly can't play this turn. Although I'm very close. So I guess I'll just make a token with Beast twice. Flip the Cradle. And then next turn we should be able to empty our hands. Corpse Knights, that's fine. Double Corpse Knights, alright, that does start adding up. So, don't really want to block the token, just because every extra token is quite valuable with the Cradle in play. Alright, so step one, get as many creatures in play before we tap this for mana. Three, four, five, can't play this kicked before we tap this. So I guess the best we can do is Elves and then Beast. And then I should still be able to play out everything else. Alright, so we've got a lot of power and toughness in play, but... Uh, not sure if we're actually gonna kill them in time, because they can just chump the big creatures with the tokens and kinda ping me to death with these Corpse Knights. 
want to keep some amount of 1-1s one in play to enable the beasts, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. I guess we'll spread out the counters a little bit among the different uh, races here. Unbreakable formation. Well, that's gonna hurt. So just go to try and prevent as much damage as possible, do some chum blocking. So right now I'm still taking two, three, four, five, down to five. Is that acceptable? I guess I could jump with Elf too. Alright, this is as much damage as I can prevent, I think. A land's not quite gonna cut it. Probably just gotta pass. And hope I'm not dead next turn, but at this point I'm not sure what I can top deck to get out of this. Even if I find a Song of Freilis, it would be too slow to give the team trample, so I think we're pretty dead now. Alright, GG's, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. This hand's missing some token makers to go with all these Loxodons. Don't think I can keep as is. Yeah, it's a little too sketchy if I don't draw a 2-drop on turn 2 here. This is a bit more balanced. Still missing green mana, but I can play Riss and Raise. So it doesn't take much for me to have a functional hand. I'm tempted to just get rid of the Growing Rites and rely on the Loxodon as my game plan, or I could get rid of Loxodon and just go for a game plan where I draw the green mana, play my token makers, flip the Growing Rites and activate Riss a bunch, which could be more fun. I guess we've seen Loxodon enough in action that will give uh, Riss and Growing Rites a chance. Two turns to draw green mana, and there we go. What do we start with? I guess the migration. In case I draw Lanor Elves, I can play it alongside Raziel Arm still. Or the uh, Lovestruck Beast Adventure. Rixmani Reveler, interesting. This card's. Ooh, I see what this is Ancestral Mask. So this has to be a Storm Herald deck that tries to get back a bunch of auras out of the graveyard attached to a creature. Definitely a card that's going to pick up in value with Ikoria, which has the uh, aura giving a creature plus 20 plus 20. Just got to figure out a way to untap the creature first. I'm just going to end of turn raise the alarm. Or I could make a token with Riss and then next turn play Growing Rites and hope to transform it right away. So yeah, they've got some nice auras in the graveyard already that they could get back. Let's play the rights. And I'll have just enough mana to activate Riss. Should have put a stop on my end step to activate the uh, ability here but I don't think my opponent plays any instant speed removal that could kill a token in response. Another binding. So do they mill over Storm Heralds? Not yet. So if they don't have one in hand, we should be in decent shape. Thrill discards land draw two. So... This makes 5 mana, 6, so can play the raise the alarm here, but can double my tokens. And uh, yeah, let's make some more tokens. So 
So do I attack? I mean, next turn I can probably kill them in one attack with everyone. Just want to make sure I keep up enough uh, blockers in case they do find Storm Herald and attack with like a giant Storm Herald with a bunch of auras attached. So it might be safer to just stay back with everyone and then next turn send a team. They get to gain a bit of life. Get back Stitcher Supplier. Alright, do they have a Storm Herald? There it is. Alright. Well, let's see what happens. They can take out Riss with the fight spell here. 26 power. Should be able to survive this attack at least. Just gotta make sure we have enough to then kill them on the way back. So, how many tokens do I have? 4, 8, 16, plus another 6, 22, elf 23. So they have two blockers. So, the minimum I have to block with to survive is this. So yeah, I think this lets me attack back for lethal. Anything I'm missing here? Don't think so. Alright, we're at one life and we should have exactly enough on the way back. Unless I've miscounted, sometimes it's hard to tell with these stacks of tokens. Alright, so we got to see the deck in action against a variety of matchups in Historic. Definitely a lot of fun, can have some very explosive starts, and getting to double your tokens turn after turn with the Riss is a sight to behold. The deck is just a little bit soft to sweeper effects, since it tends to go all in, and it's uh, very hard to recover from a sweeper effect with a deck like this. But uh, so it goes. So yeah, that's gonna be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.